Right. So as some of you must have seen the um, challenge document this week, the first career exercise we're having is basically going to cover time management and prioritization. So just to give a little um, topic introduction like we normally do before we go into the exercise solution. So why time management? Why is time management essential? You cannot overemphasize the importance of time management. It will help you improve the quality of your work. It will help you be disciplined with your time so you know you don't spend time on necessary things. It will help you improve your career because by the time you get into your job, you'll be assigned tasks and you want to be able to manage your time while you're carrying out all these tasks. It will also help you enhance your decision-making abilities. At the same time, that way you'll be able to accomplish more. So. There are a number of time management methods out there you can imbibe, a couple of them. So for this, um, um, for today, we're going to just be looking at three. We have the Pomodoro technique, the getting things done technique, and we also have the um, importance to urgent matrix, which can also be called the two by two matrix. So the Pomodoro technique is basically you just breaking down your tax with short breaks interval. So say you have a couple of tasks, say you have five tasks, you break um, the major tasks into two with short breaks in between them. The getting things done, which is a simpler form, is pretty much writing out all, writing out all the things you need to do, then breaking the bigger tasks into smaller tasks. So that way you can monitor your progress by knowing, oh, you've done the major things of this one, and then it's just left with like the other parts. The important urgent matrix, which almost feel like a SWOT analysis is basically you noting the important stacks, the unimportant one, the urgent and the not urgent one. That way you have like four quadrants where you can now have like important and urgent, important but not urgent, important but urgent and also important and not urgent. <clears throat> I've covered um, time management methods. With time, you would know the one that is that suits you the most, if that makes sense. You would know the one that um helps you carry out um, your tax easily we're going to now look at prioritization it is important to also learn how to prioritize your tax when you get into your job um when you get into these global level jobs when you start carrying out your tax you'll be assigned tax and it's left to you to know how to prioritize it to know which is important and to know which you can attend to later so how do you prioritize you break down your tax into simple activities for example if you're supposed to make an app, you can break it down to like front end, back end, and then wireframes. You then separate the urgent tax from important to non urgent, then unimportant tax. So it is advised to always like go for the important ones and the urgent ones first. That way you can just like get it out of the way. Then you can also like set reminders that you need to also go through the rest. Essentially, this um, career exercise, the first career exercise for this week, is basically you responding to mails. So it is left to you to decide which mails, based on the content of the mail, it is left to you to decide which is important, which is left for you to um, ignore, flag for later, or just respond to immediately. So just as a guide for this exercise, um, for you to just be able to prioritize this tax, the mails in this exercise, you can take your time to read the tax description and requirements in five minutes, go through all the mails in like another 10 minutes, then select the important mails and choose the one that can be ignored, respond to the most important mails and go through the ones that are supposed to be forwarded, then justify the ones that you're not responding to, if that makes sense. So now let's take a look at the exercise itself. Sorry, Miriam, can I just jump in for a second? So we've covered a lot of material. Hi, everyone. Um, does anyone have any questions or thoughts? We've covered a lot. Um, and I know we're trying to go. We have a limited amount of time. The exercise is coming up. But so are there any questions? And one thing that I wanted to add is after uh, a few years of work experience on my side, one thing that I've realized or learned is that there is no one solution that works for everyone. A and B, as my jobs have changed, the tasks and techniques that I've had to use have also changed. So I would say that the, the Pomodoro, GTD, and the um, importance matrix are almost, it's, they're like tools. It's like different approaches or different libraries. 
there's many different, none of them are perfect. Um, none of them cover everything, but they're almost frameworks to help stimulate your thinking. But I just wanted to pause if we have time, Miriam, and just ask if there are any questions. Because I know that a lot of people have said that prioritization and time management is a challenge. So I think we still have a few minutes before the exercise starts at 11 UTC, but just to see if anyone has any questions or maybe any specific challenges that they wanted to share. Or let me ask, let me ask a prompt uh, in a different way. Has anyone tried Pomodoro before? where you just do, you set a timer, you work heads down for 25 minutes, and then you take a five minute break and then you come back to it. Has anyone tried that? You can just put up your hand so we can see. No? Matilda's tried it, Nardos has tried it. Yes, okay. Has anyone heard of GTD, getting things done? No? Yes? Okay. <laughs> it's very hard to get a read of the room. Are we just, I, I'm not sure if we're just talking to ourselves. Matilda? Matilda, do you have something you wanted to share? Or you're just responding? Okay. So how, so even if we give these frameworks, uh, it would be really helpful to know how we can be helpful to you. So the materials will be available. We have the exercise coming up. But the one thing that none of you will be able to buy is time. And so maximizing or being efficient in your use of time will be important. So Daisy, you wanted to make a, a contribution? Oh, yes. I haven't used the tools before, but like I've just had um, a local arrangement. I'm like maybe from this time to this time, I want to maybe focus on something. But the biggest challenge has been concentrating throughout the amount of time or if that's not the case maybe you find that you get so much into the flow so even if you had allocated maybe say one hour you end up um, doing three hours of like the same thing mm -hmm. okay yeah. any other so maybe i can ask uh, again the same question but using different words how given that time uh, prioritization and time management has been identified as a problem or an issue how can what how can we be helpful you can type in the chat box you can put up your hand i'm just curious how how can we be helpful It's pretty hard to help if there's no, um, if it's not clear. I mean, are we at the point where people don't even know which questions to ask? Abu Bakr? Uh, um, good morning. Good morning. Um, basically, for me, how can we be helpful in terms of the time, the time management and all? So um, basically, I just feel like um, putting us into a group, it's, it's way better. Why? Because we can able to learn from each other. And when we are working on tasks, the collaboration and um of course the tax is being split and everybody will have a specific portion of the, the exercise that he will be working on so he can be very effective and they can be able to um perform more as compared to one person having a whole lot of tax to be completed in a short time frame fine so okay so we, we can, the do, that, we can do that sometimes but maybe my question was slightly different, not in not in terms of to be successful during the training, but what tools and techniques can we provide you so that when you enter the world of work, that you also, um, you can manage your own time because we can't intervene when your manager gives you a lot of work. So what are some tools, what are questions or tools and techniques or issues that you're having? Binya? Can you hear me? Yeah, good morning or good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon, okay. Uh, so one of the reasons why time is an issue is because uh, some of us have uh, difficulty with our machines. Uh, mm -hmm. A slow running machine can be uh, 
a huge reason for uh, lacking the time to complete a, a given task. So maybe if there is a way to give access to a cloud uh, infrastructure, that could be an easier way. Mm -hmm. uh, that could uh, minimize uh, one of the reasons yeah. for, for fair, time management. Fair point. We'll do that where we can, but cloud infrastructure, cloud infrastructure is extremely expensive. And so we're also very resource constrained. So we'll do it where we can, but by and large, we're not able to do it. But that's, uh, we would encourage use of free resources like Colab where possible. This week, I think there will be some cloud infrastructure, which is available for a limited period of time. But, um, okay, I mean, let's continue. So I'm still not hearing the types of questions that I expected, and maybe it's just a sign of we're not far enough along the process that people know which questions to ask. So I hope that you will make use of these techniques like Pomodoro and GTD, or at least investigate them and try them out and figure out which one is uh, the right one for you. But the types of questions that I expected to hear were around how do I decide what is highest priority? How do I manage between simple tasks, which are almost quick wins versus more deep thinking tasks? Um, do I work more? Am I, if I'm more productive in the morning, do I optimize for the morning? That style of planning and organization will become more important for you. So, Heywan, I think you had a question. I thought I'd seen a hand go up. Hi, Heywan. Hi, hi, Aaron. Um, I, I, I wanted to ask, um, what can we do uh, when we don't know what time the task we we're working? Uh, I mean, we when we need to search more on the thing we need to do, and uh, we are uncertain about the time that it takes us, and how can we plan the, the, those type of tasks? So that's a great question, and I think that you'll always find tasks that are like that. Um, and I think the approach that I would take is to say, what can I get done in one hour? And I would always try and come up with, I wouldn't try and answer the question right away, but I would at least come up with a framework where I can see where are the boundaries of my problem. So if you were given a task by your manager which says, investigate, um, I think this was one of the career's challenges, which uh, should we use AWS, Azure, or uh, GCP? Then at least start to answer what what are the metrics by which I will make that decision? And I would write down, and I've started going back to pencil and paper, and I would put a time-bound framework there. I'm going to spend one hour, and whatever I get at the end of the hour will be good enough. And then you can go back and reevaluate it. But putting, I try and I usually operate on daily cycles. So what am I going to get done today? And I try and learn every day what should I finish that day and what should I didn't what should I not finish that day. If you can get down and make that more specific into like a morning or even to the hourly framework, that's probably enough. But I think setting a realistic expectation of how long this will take and sticking to that as much as possible. If you say it's going to take an hour and you are spending one hour, fifteen minutes, fine. I wouldn't worry about it. But definitely don't spend three hours. So I'll hand back to Miriam, and but I would encourage everyone to keep thinking about this as we go through the training. Use the careers channel, and I believe this is one of the most important. It's one of the most important techniques, or one of the most important things that you will have to learn how to do because that's the resource, your time, which uh, you have, and nobody can double for you. Birup. Yeah. Hello. Uh, can you hear me? Okay, so uh, the, the challenge, one of the major challenges that, that I was uh, faced was uh, uh, documenting the result. I mean, uh, as we all know, like documenting the result is a major part of any task. Mm -hmm. But uh, from the last two tasks, what I was very challenged with was I got so tired in doing the, the implementation part of the task. And when it comes to writing the documentation, I I just become so tired and I lose to uh, present everything I, I did on my uh, implementation. Mm -hmm. So I, I need some kind of help how to manage that. Yeah, so there's, there's a couple of different ways to go about it. One way is that some people 
um, they write their documentation first or they at least structure how their document will look first. And one of the reasons that's important is when you get to the world of work, the work that you do is fine, but the understanding of what you have done is very important and that's what will be communicated. So I'm a big fan of starting with deciding how will the structure look like? And so summary, introduction, background, process, results, methods, decide on what your structure will look like. And I think the second um, very important thing that you need uh, approach that I take is I always write in bullet points first. So don't write the content. It's very hard to write a sentence, but it's much easier to think through, at least for me, what are the main points that I want to make? And I usually do that on pencil and paper and then extending that out into sentences is much easier because starting from start to finish and saying, I'm going to write the report without having that structure and the structure, as I said, first headings and then bullet points. And then the last point is going into prose. Um, that works very well for me. And what that also does is separates the two types of thinking. One type of thinking is structuring and the second type is writing. Uh -huh. um, but the problem is uh, the documentation is actually uh, very dependent on the implementation. So we have to complete the implementation first to go for the documentation. But that, that is actually the problem. It's possibly, that's true, but I think you, you know which sections you'll, you'll need. Yeah. And I think that you can always add the bullet points as you go. Yeah, I do that. So, I mean, beyond that, I mean, it is, it's just a lot of work. There's no magic solution. I can't tell you like, you know, there's no, there is no magic solution, but these are things um, which help me. Thank you. The other thing, I mean, just as a tip for everyone, each of us are human. So I would also encourage you to get off your computer sometime and go do something else on a piece of paper. And writing is a good way to do that because all of us benefit from, I like going to, co to coffee shops and just writing there because then I'm just not tired sitting in my room in my, shorts by myself thanks sarah yeah. stella thank you good afternoon, good afternoon. Um, i have a question on time management um especially for uh, people who are trying to learn at the same time implementing um the difficult tasks so sometimes you are trying to learn something and when it comes to implementing it takes you a bit long to figure how to figure out how to do it uh, what can you advise us um on like how can we do it better i mean i think you're actually in a very luxurious situation um, if i were you i would decide how many hours a day am i going to work what do i need to do to make enable that many hours of work to happen and then I would just get done whatever I can get done in those hours. That's it. I mean, nothing more, nothing less. If you, the week will finish, Saturday, 8 p.m. UTC will come. And I would organize myself. I guess nobody here has, I don't know if anyone has uh, partners or children or other responsibilities, but I would just make my schedule of how much work time am I going to put in and get as much done as you can. And then you hand in whatever you have done. That's it. I mean, if you imagine the very boring, old days of work where you're expected to physically be present for eight hours a day, that's how they would do it too. You show up to the office at eight, nine, 10 o'clock, whatever the time is, and you leave eight hours later, once whatever you got done, you got done. I would take the same approach. Now then within that, you just have to optimize your time within that. But I wouldn't worry too much about it. If you're, if you have to learn more, then you have to learn more. There's no, there's no way around it. So I wouldn't overthink it decide how much time you're going to put together. The most effective, yeah, I was just at a long meeting with Yavabel and we agreed that the most effective people are those people who have a clear schedule and they stick to it. You, it's, it's a huge percentage of your productivity not to have to decide, am I going to show up? Am I not going to show up? This is why we have the morning standups to force people that at 8 a.m. UTC, the day starts. So I wouldn't overthink it, Stella. So we're waiting for Miriam to come back. I think she dropped off, but uh, yeah, you did. Yeah, that is, that's, that's where experience comes in. And this is where it's harder for you now, but this is when everyone gets a job. They're going to be starting at the junior level. 
it will get easier. So I wouldn't worry too, too, too much about it. And I mean, to your, let's look at the richest man in the world, Elon Musk. Almost every product that he has ever announced has been a few years late. So you're not alone in this challenge. Rafa? Hi, Aaron and everyone. Good afternoon. So first of all, I just came late because I thought we are meeting on uh, 11 UTC. And that's funny because it's uh, about time management. Uh, so unfortunately, I missed the introduction. I'm not sure what exactly you talked about. But uh, on that, I just want to reflect one thing in my side. Um, like, I'm more like a theoretical person. I know so many things and tips about how to manage time, but when it comes just to practice and uh, practical work, it's just like uh, I really don't manage and uh, I fell on that. And yeah, I, I don't know exactly if there is like a big gap between uh, knowing the thing and just implementing it. So, so yeah. <laughs> I think the solution to all of the above is to keep to have a very simple system which works for you, which works for any person here, and just to implement it reliably. I wouldn't, I wouldn't overthink it. There's no magic. There is no magic solution beyond having a simple, clear framework and then improving that as you go. So I, I would really encourage everyone here. I attended a very, uh, I would say, fancy seminar on one part of the entrepreneurship process, and this lady was excellent. And what she said to everyone is that your best tool. The single best tool that she uses is in Microsoft Excel. She's like, I don't need any fancy um, tool, software, software as a service. There's a thousand out there. She said, there's nothing better than a well-used Excel. The same is true with time management. I mean, you can use Pomodoro, GTD. At the core of it, it means sitting down and you work when you say you're going to work and you stop when you say you're going to stop. So don't overthink it and don't mm -hmm. expect any... Um, is a great, and Miriam Spax will hand back over to her. There's a great line in a book from a famous venture capitalist where he said, I don't know if you guys know what a silver bullet is. A silver bullet is a magic solution. You shoot it through the vampire's yeah. heart and it fixes everything. He was like, actually, what you need is a lot of lead bullets. You don't need silver bullets. So there's no magic. Managing your time is like managing yourself, managing your energy, staying focused. Pick something simple and go for it. Mm -hmm. So Miriam, back to you. Miriam, are you there? Yeah. I'm so sorry, my. Okay, I'm going to present because yeah. I don't know if Miriam. Okay. Go ahead. If you yeah. if you can go okay. ahead, that would be great. My connection is. Really okay, so why don't I go ahead then? If your connection is not strong, then I'm going to go ahead. I have to go out and come back. Okay. So, Miriam, why don't you let me go ahead? Because your connection is pretty, uh, it's pretty weak. Uh, so how do I present this thing? Slideshow. Perfect. Okay. So we already did this one. Can you hear me? So I need to find the other one. Just give me a moment, please. No. It's better now, yeah. Oof, we're not doing so well with the... Um, Miriam, are you there? Okay, I'm going to go ahead. Okay, so can everyone see? Um, everyone can see what we're doing here. So we're going to start just after this tutorial, um, a one hour exercise, and you're going to get 
So everyone's going to get a document and we're going to ask everyone to duplicate this document. So don't work within the document, but create your own copy. Um, and we're going to be asking you to practice both prioritization, time management, and professional communication. So professional communication is the way that you speak, you listen, you write, and you respond within the workplace. Um, and so this is important for you in, in terms of meetings, presentations, but there's a lot that happens using Slack and memos and email and getting the right tone and finding the right balance of speed, tone, and content is important. Um, one tip I want to give everyone, and I had a discussion with one of the trainees, it's important to be a little bit more professional than you think you might need to be. And so the example here was somebody, some, we were a little bit late in sharing something and the tone of the message was rather on the demanding side as opposed to professional side. And so it's important, these things can be misconstrued because you have to realize people will be reading messages in their own experience at their own time of day, who knows what they're thinking at the time. So really important that you keep a professional civil tone. Um, it needs to be, sentences have to be well put together. Don't use things like T, U, it's for thank you, respectful tone, um, don't know slang, definitely no foul languages, and it should be super clear. Um, every email should have a subject. So that's part of the email subject salutation. I always use dear so-and-so, the body, and then at the end, a remark that says, thank you, best regards, whatever the content is. Um, and so there's some ideas on etiquette here. So be brief, be brief. definitely do not send all emails in capital letters. Um, use paragraph structure, avoid abbreviations. You should be proofreading. Emojis, I think in professional context, until you get to know the team, definitely avoid them. Um, exclamation points, of course, you shouldn't be using them excessively. And it's always a good idea to say, I have attached an attachment. So the exercise that's gonna start just after this tutorial is you're gonna get 25 emails and there's a simulation which you guys have all seen um, in the careers exercise. And your task is very straightforward. You just need to write, respond to as many of the emails as possible. Um, that's it. And so the rest of it, is pretty clearly explained, I think, in the actual document. Um, but the goal here is not necessarily to respond to every email in perfect fashion, but it's to prioritize, to decide which ones are most important and how do you get the most value out of your time. Um, I would encourage everyone not to worry about the content of the, so there's a business scenario which is presented, feel free to make stuff up. So we don't know anything about the company because it's a made up company, Joloffsoft, so if you need to make up some content or you need to say, okay, this has happened or this is why I'm saying yes or why I'm saying no, feel free to invent as much as you can. What we're really wanting you to practice is prioritization, professional communication, and deciding how do you do, um, how do you use your time in a time constrained situation. So once we share the document, we'll start the timer and then we'll add a submission link to Google Classroom. Two pages max. Um, look, keep it short. I think two, two pages is going to be really short. So we'll, we will be flexible on that. So keep it short if you can, but it can be longer than two pages. If you have any questions, use all career exercises. Um, yeah, I mean, that's straight. And the other point is please create a copy of the document. Do not work in the actual document. Otherwise, it'll be an enormous mess. So create a copy of the document. So that's it. Uh, any questions? Any questions? You guys waiting for me to dance? Is there no questions? Okay, so last call for questions. Otherwise we are going to share. Okay, I see Stella. After that, we'll share the document in the careers directory as well as on the Slack channel and we'll create a submission uh, in the classroom. Stella? Okay, hi. How is a direct forward, forward uh, email supposed to be treated? Uh, so I would write, uh, you're sending it to somebody and say, dear so-and-so, um, please see below. Thank you. Or please see below for your attention or please see below for your action. Personally, I try and avoid, unless okay. I know somebody very well, I try and avoid a direct forward with no content. 
because uh, in this in this case you are representing the CEO of the company and you want to make it unambiguous. So what are you asking them to do or what information are you asking them to provide? You should always be, if possible, as clear as you can. So what are you actually asking them to do? So if possible, I would um, always provide that context. Uh, Birok, you have to actually write the content. You need to write the actual emails. So basically, you have an hour to write twenty as up to twenty-five emails, and prioritize which one is most important, which one is least important, and that everyone should be aware um, of the the context. And as Stella had, uh, sorry, as Miriam had suggested that you first understand what is the challenge asking you to do, read all of the emails, and then start prioritizing, and then start responding. So your prioritization will come in how many do you actually get done and the depth of the depth through which you, imp you respond to the important emails. So there's a scenario that's been presented. The company is uh, about to release a final version of its product. It's an important release for um, raising investment. And so when you see the emails, you'll see, you'll have to decide which ones are essential and which ones are not. Any other questions? No? All right, guys, so feel free to use the, or you should be using the All Careers channel. It's gonna be heads down. We're gonna start now and we'll finish in, uh, we'll finish in one hour. So let's say we'll finish at uh, 1210 UTC. So have a good hour. Keep an eye out. The document will be added to the shared drive as well as we'll share it on as well. So thank you, everyone.